After the last last win at Southampton and then a good point in Paris, how would you sum up the last week? Are you pretty pleased with how it's gone? Well, yes, it's overall a positive week. We uh, still, uh, I think we have shown uh, the right attitude, the right spirit, and we know we have room for improvement in some areas of our game. But uh, we will work on, but overall it's positive, the results are positive. You're unbeaten in your last 25 games against newly promoted teams. It's a great record. What do you put that down to? I don't know. We take our games uh, seriously. We focus to do well. And uh, that's what you want to do again tomorrow, of course. We have a short recovery, but uh, everybody looks to have recovered well. And uh, we go into the game with the desire, of course, to, to win the game again. Alexis had another long, gruelling summer with Chile. But do you feel that with two goals in his last three games, he might be starting to come back into the form we know? He is. Uh, he had a long, long rest. You know, he had five weeks uh, uh, holiday. and. Uh, Took him a while to get back to fully uh, fit physically, to be fully fit physically. But now he's back. Yes. And just lastly, can you give us an update on the team news ahead of the whole game? Look, uh, Walcott could be back in the squad. I have to check how well uh, he came out of a session today. I haven't seen the medical people yet. And uh, Ramsey is of course uh, still out. And. Uh, Gabriel is back uh, in normal training. I don't think he will be included. He might play on Tuesday night. And uh, so the injury situation is not bad at the moment. Awesome. Thanks for your time. You said Ramsey is, is, of course, still out. Was there not any ambition to have him back for this game? Yeah, I hoped, but uh, he's uh, not ready. So obviously, maybe not the, 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 the League Cup and then next weekend, first time for him? Uh, we come too early, I think. Is that some added problem? No, no, but uh, he is still little. Uh, we are cautious with him uh, because we do not want any setback with his hamstring. And at the moment, I think uh, for Tuesday it's really too early for him. Um, had problems today disrupted your preparations? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like you, you like your press conference disrupted your press conference as well. But uh, look, we have to deal with that. No, it's not nothing dramatic. The players will be let off a fine note, particularly today. If, if they were late, will they? Yes, uh, they were late without being fined. <laughs> the, the M25 will be fined. <laughs> um, what do you think of the job that Mike Phelan's doing at, at Hull? He's doing very well. Uh, you know, his experience has worked in big clubs, uh, big competitions and uh, he has done really well and uh, he's a real football man who has uh, given some stability to Hull and uh, they are difficult to beat. Given his years working as assistant to, you know, like yeah. Ferguson, were you surprised he hasn't been given a, a job more this time? Look, uh, maybe he enjoyed his job uh, the way he, he was doing and uh, I uh, think uh, sometimes People behind the managers are real football people who, who have not the same pressure but can enjoy to work every day, you know. So uh, it's not especially because uh, your manager that people are, have more knowledge than uh, some people who work inside the clubs. Uh, uh, if yes, what is important is the experience of the big games and uh, the knowledge you get from these big games. I know you were asked, I think, last week about contract situation for Urza and, and Sanchez. Anything to add at all? No. no. Uh, and what about some, your captain, Per Mertesacker? His contract runs out in the summer. Yeah, he as well. Uh, at the moment, we have not uh, dealt with that situation. Are you waiting to see about his fitness? Is that what the delay is? Not specially. Of course, he has to come back. But, uh, you know, uh, we go year by year after uh, we spare and uh, we sit together at some stage when he will be back in full training. And um, um, Bayerin has offered Usain Bolt out again uh, for a sprint race. You saying he's still waiting for that phone call? Bayerin? Yeah. Well, uh, that is a bit ambitious. <laughs> you don't think he would stand a chance? Uh, Usain Bolt loves football, yeah. but uh, I think he's still uh, too quick for, for Hector. Can we ask you about Xhaka? Of course, a lot of people are quite surprised he didn't play in midweek. 
Isn't yeah, you know, it's uh, not about his uh, quality at the moment. He adapts to the pace of the English game. And uh, for me, it's about uh, pairs as well who work together. You know, Coquelin and Casola uh, have worked well together. So, but he will play games uh, and uh, he uh, is every week he's stronger and better and I think he will have a huge impact as a player. He looks as if he's got a great physical strength. I mean, the other night he came on, you could see him immediately yes. impose himself mm -hmm. in the game. He can, of course. He has a stature, he has the, the power, he has the strength. Uh, what we want him is to use that in a very efficient way. It's short, you know, we arrived, uh, we are September, we started in August, so it's one month for uh, many players, uh, uh, took them some time to get into the team, he will, he will do that without any problem. How, do you, how would you describe him? Do you describe him as a box-to-box -box or as, as an anchor man? He, he seems to be quite adaptable. Yes, uh, I personally uh, prefer him as a box-to-box -box player because uh, he has the engine, he has the power, he has... Uh, the long pass. He likes his. Uh, he likes to come deep and distribute the game. Uh, but uh, I think he has as well the the engine to to have an impact with his runs. Has he got the qualities you'd be missing in midfield? Would you say? Look, uh, we had always good midfield players. You know, uh, cannot say that we were missing anything. We wanted to add players with quality and. Uh, him and Nani are top class players and uh, there's big competition in midfield at the moment uh, uh, but I'm sure both of them will, uh, will get in the team. When you, when you say it's about playing in pairs, does that mean it's difficult for him to play with Kazor? No, not necessarily. Uh, what I mean is that uh, uh, Kazor and Coquelin have uh, 50 or 60 games together there and that has a little impact sometimes in my decisions. With, with Jack, is it sometimes do, do the new arrivals get blown away by the pace and physical nature of English football? Does it take them by surprise? Look, uh, in one or two occasions, I think he adapted quite well, uh, personally, and uh, but his physical strength and his uh, uh, his power uh, uh, allows him to to pretend to play straight away, but. Sometimes, you know, we lost our first game, uh, you go a bit for stability, but uh, he's highly focused and any as well, both of them are highly focused and uh, uh, they are top, top quality. How do you evaluate your start generally? Because I mean, you seem to be quite nicely sort of sitting there, even the top six or seven as a familiar look to it. Be quite, be quite happy. Who? No, generally. Look, uh, we had a difficult start. And after that, you know uh, that you're very quickly under pressure and uh, the mental solidity of the squad is tested straight away. Uh, so we came out of it uh, uh, at the moment quite in a satisfactory way, but uh, we uh, have already to make some ground up uh, against teams who have started very well. So the mental state of the squad is good. But now we have to show the consistency with our result. Do you expect to make many changes to the starting lineup? Will Czech be back, for example? Czech will be back, yes. And many other changes? No. Can you tell us if Olivier Giroud might start? Uh, Olivier Giroud has uh, had a knock on uh, Tuesday night. I have to check if he's, uh, if he's fit and available. I mean, what, was what, what was that? Yeah, what was the problem? Big toe. I mean, all your other players have come back from Euro 2016 and started. Why has Olivier kind of been a little bit slow? He has been a bit behind at the start, you know, fitness-wise. He has been behind uh, Koscielny and uh, Ozil uh, at the start. It took him some time to get back here. Since the last week, he's slowly getting back uh, to full fitness now. He got, he, as you know, he, he got a bit of criticism, didn't he, from the French fans during Euro 2016. Mm -hmm. he's, he's always that sort of divisive figure. So well, I, I think he got a bit of uh, sceptical attitude from our, from the French fans at the start of the competition, mm -hmm. uh, before the competition, basically. And uh, during the competition, he convinced everybody what, uh, that he was the right choice. Did you talk to him about that? The open throw? Yeah. Yes, because uh, I think he has done extremely well to turn people around, you know, and uh, Olivier is a, 
a guy who's very strong mentally, and uh, to do what he did is not easy. Oh, so he's been a, obviously his man of the match, wasn't he? Uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, is it your plan that he will always start in the Champions League and Czech will always start in the Premier Look, I don't want to come out with my plan specially, but uh, I think uh, uh, the decision was questioned, but uh, what I can understand, because I have uh, I've, uh, two world-class goalkeepers and uh, for the day I have chosen Ospina and uh, I think uh, he had an outstanding game. Barcelona, for example, have that system, don't they? They have a different keeper for the... More and more clubs have that, you know. Uh, if you have two world-class goalkeepers, you cannot uh, uh, keep two world-class goalkeepers, they never get a game. One of them does not get a game, so... Uh, or you have a secondary choice and uh, who never plays, and when you get the first gets choice gets injured, uh, you have a big problem. Or you try to get two world-class goalkeepers like we have, but then you have uh, to give them games as well and big competitions.